Hey everyone, so I have another leak code tutorial for you. We will be going over the problem rotate list. This problem is asked by Microsoft primarily, but also at Bloomberg, Adobe, and LinkedIn. The description is really short. It just says, given the head of a linked list, rotate the list to the right by K places. So for this problem, we are given the head of a linked list and an integer K, and we have to rotate the list to the right by K places. So as you can see, it is a really easy problem to understand, but implementation wise, it's a little bit challenging. So to solve this problem, we will need to be somewhat comfortable with creating linked list node references and doing simple integer math. No worries if you're not comfortable with those things though, I'm gonna walk through it step by step. So let's look at an example. Let's say we are given this input, we have to rotate the list two times since k is equal to two. So in the first rotation, our tail, node five, will become the head. In the second rotation, the new tail, node four, will become the head. So as you can see, each rotation, we're essentially just moving the tail of our link list to the head. So after the second rotation, that is actually our final answer. Now let's look at the same problem, but with K equal to seven this time. So of course we could perform seven rotations one by one, eventually arriving to our answer. But can you think of any shortcut we can take using some simple math? Take a couple seconds to think about it. The correct way is to use the modulus operator to compute the amount of rotations after excluding full list rotations. A full list rotation is when you rotate the list back to its original state. So if I rotated this list five times, we would just end up with this by the end of it, the exact state of our original input. That is work that we don't need to compute. Instead, we can take our integer k and mod it with the length of our list. So if we did seven, which is K modulus by the length of our list, which is five, that would equal two. This operation gives us the remaining amount of rotations we need to compute still. And notice the amount of rotations is two, which is the same input we had in our previous example. So what this means is our answer will be the following once again. Since we had the same link list in each example, a K value of two or seven doesn't matter. They will always arrive at the same output. In fact, with this same link list, any modulus computation that results in two will have the same output. So all of these K values would arrive at the same output and the list goes on. Notice that each one of these numbers is increasing by five the same length as our linked list. This is not a coincidence. All of these K values result in the same rotations made after the modulus. All right, now let's walk through the algorithm. We're gonna use this same input again. So after performing seven rotations on this list, we will be taking this section and moving it to the front. Notice that the tail of our linked list, node five, then sits in front of our head node one. So the first step in our algorithm is to have a pointer to our tail in the linked list. The second step is to calculate the length of our linked list. That way we can perform the modulus operation. Fortunately, we can do step one and step two at the same exact time. So first we're gonna initialize a length pointer starting at one, and this keeps track of the number of nodes that we have. Additionally, we're gonna have a pointer called old tail initialized at our head. This starts at the head of our linked list initially, and we will continuously update this pointer until we arrive at our tail. The reason this is called old tail is because this tail will eventually not be the tail in our linked list. Now we just iterate until the next node right after whatever old tail is pointing to is null. When the next node is null, we know we have arrived at the end. If we run through this list, we eventually arrive at a length of five and our old tail pointing to node five. The third step of our algorithm is to actually make the old tail old. What I mean by this is we must assign the next value after our old tail to point to the head node. So node five will now point to node one. Notice now we have a cycle in our list. We don't want that. We wanna cut a connection in our list that breaks the cycle and rotates the list properly. The fourth step is to calculate our pivot. 
the node where we will start rotating the list. Here is where we have to use the modulus operator. So if we do k mod length, which is 7 mod 5, that equals 2, we end up with a remainder of 2. So we have to perform the rotation counting from 2 starting at the back of our list. So if we count backwards in our list, 1 on 5 and then 2 on 4, this means the new head of our list should be 4 and the connection here between 3 and 4 should be removed. Obviously, we can't go backwards in our linked list because this is not a doubly linked list. So we just need to calculate our pivot. That way we can go from left to right. Fortunately, this is really simple. We can do the length minus two, which is five minus two, and that equals three. Now, if we count from left to right, we know that node three will be our new tail. So our pivot after performing this calculation is three. And we get this calculation by doing length minus k mod length. The fifth step is to reach our new tail. And really, all we are going to do is count up to our pivot. So for this fifth step, we're going to initialize a node pointer called new tail, and that's going to start at our head. And then we're also going to have i, which starts at one. So we're going to iterate all the way up to pivot minus one. And by the end of it, our new tail is going to point to node three. The sixth and last step of our algorithm is to point to the new head and break the connection after our new tail to ensure we don't have a cycle. Our new head variable will point to the node right after our new tail. So our new head pointer will point to node four. And then to break the cycle in our list, we just need to assign null to the next pointer in our new tail. By the end of performing these operations, we have successfully rotated our list k times, where our new head is here and our new tail is here. All right, let's dive into the code for the solution. We are given a list node head and an integer k, and we need to rotate our list k times. So first, we should always handle the edge case, especially in linked list problems where our head is null or maybe we only have a head in our linked list. So we can say if our head equals null or our head.next is equal to null, then we can just return our head. Because no matter how large or small k is, rotating a single node is not going to change anything. So we can just return head. And now we're going to perform step one and step two. Remember, we can do these steps at the same time. So we're going to initialize a length variable. That's going to start at one. And then we're going to initialize a list node which is called old tail, and we're gonna start it at our head. So the only things we're doing for step one and step two are getting the length of our list and making a pointer to the tail, the current tail that we have in our input. So we do this by saying while old tail dot next, while it's not equal to null, we're just going to increase our length and assign our old tail equal to old tail dot next. Now we're going to go down to step three and step three, we need to make the list a cycle by assigning the old tail to the head. And we can do that by just doing old tail dot next is equal to head. So what we're doing with this step three is we are making a cycle in our list because we're assigning the our tail to have a pointer to our head. For step four, we're going to calculate our pivot. And so we can do that by just saying equal to length minus k mod length. So remember the pivot is the point where we stop our rotations. So what we need to do for step five is we're going to create a pointer and we're gonna call it new tail and we're gonna assign it to our head. So this is gonna be exactly how it sounds, the new tail after we perform K rotations. And we're gonna loop from one, so we're gonna say I is equal to one, and I is less than pivot. And as we iterate up to the pivot we calculated, we're just gonna say new tail equals new tail dot next. So by the end of performing step five, 
we should be at our new tail. Then at step six, we are going to assign our new head to our new tail dot next. So we're going to say list node new head equals new tail dot next. And at this point, we still have a circular link list. So what we want to do is we want to break the connection. We do not want to cycle. So to do that, we can just say new tail dot next equals null. And then all we need to do is return our new head. So just to reiterate, so this is easily understood because I know it's a lot of steps. Step one, we are going to calculate the length of our list. Step two, we're going to assign a pointer to our old tail before we do K rotations. Step three, we are going to assign our old tail connection to the head. Essentially, we're making a cycle at this step. Step four, we're going to calculate our pivot. Step five, find our new tail, which is at our pivot. Step six, we're going to assign our new head to be whatever is right after our new tail. And then we're going to break the connection on line 35 because we don't want to cycle anymore when we return our final output. Our time complexity is going to be big O of n, where n is the number of nodes we have in the list. We have to iterate to the very end of our list in step one and step two. As for step five, we're also looping over up to our pivot, but our pivot is not going to be any larger than the number of nodes we have in our list. So overall, it's just linear time. As for our space complexity, we do not initialize any extra memory in this algorithm, so it's just constant. I just want to point something out regarding space complexity for linked list problems. I know this can be a bit confusing sometimes. If I were to do list node equals new list node, you know, using the new keyword, that would mean I'm using extra space. But nowhere in our algorithm are we doing that. We're just using pointers to list nodes from our original input. So that's why the space complexity is constant. If you like my style of teaching or maybe you want more in-depth, high-quality tutorials, you can check out my website, algoswithmichael.com, and the link for that will be in the description. Also, go check out my public Discord channel if you guys, you know, maybe want to team up with different people studying for interviews. I try to go in there and answer questions as much as I can as well. And with that, I'll catch you guys later.